Hi guys, I'm Brandon Lee. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to answer questions that I have received. If you've messaged me in the past about camera gear, about filmmaking techniques, probably I haven't answered you. And the reason for that is that I get dozens of these messages a day. I get a little overwhelmed with the questions from people and it's kind of impossible for me to keep up with all of them and answer them personally. This is my attempt today to get to as many of them as possible, as well as I can, as quickly as I can. All right, let's get started. First up, Alonzo asks, if I wanna get smooth B-rolls and slow motion plus portraying myself speaking to the camera, would you recommend Sony 50 millimeter F1.8 OSS, not FE, or Sony 35 millimeter F1.8 fixed prime lens, question face, question face, question face emoji. Alonzo, the answer to your question is the 35 millimeter F1.8 lens because I would wanna shoot myself with a slightly wider lens so that I have a little bit more room to move around in the frame and so that the camera doesn't have to be so far away from me. If you're holding the camera like this though, selfie style, the 35 millimeter is not gonna be wide enough. You're gonna to wanna to shoot yourself with at minimum a 28 millimeter lens or even better, like a 10 to 18 or something like that on APS-C. Kimmo asks, I'm planning to buy my first cam for video shooting. I just can't decide if I should get the A6500 or the A7S2, any suggestions? I wouldn't recommend either of those cameras right now. I would say get the A7 III. It's got the best of all the worlds of all the previous cameras, except for maybe a little bit of low light performance. But if you're not shooting at super, super high ISOs, then A7 III is the way to go. JB asks, hi sir, do you think A7S II is enough for photography, thanks? Uh, here I assume he means enough megapixels? enough resolution for photography. Disclaimer, I'm not really a photographer. I don't take pictures with my cameras. I'm a filmmaker, I shoot video, that's all I do. If you're publishing on the web and you're not cropping a whole lot on your image, then the A7S II is probably fine. If you're trying to do huge blow-ups, then maybe 12 megapixels is gonna be not quite enough. Or if you're doing like high detail stuff where you need to crop in a bunch in post, then the 12 megapixels may be not quite enough. Mahmood asks, I would like to ask if the Crane Plus worth the extra money over the Crane V2. I would say, yeah, definitely get the Crane Plus over the Crane V2 because it's got the POV mode, which is just a fancy way of saying roll follow where it rolls your camera like this. And it's got a couple other tricks like being able to program the path of the gimbal and some better remote control functions. The only reason to get the Crane V2 instead is I believe the V2 is about 200 grams lighter than the Crane Plus. Dejara asks, what king of three axis you use question, question, peace sign? Well, at the moment I've been using the Moza Air Cross sometimes, but it's got some bugs that I don't like, so I don't use it all the time. And it can't handle my heaviest lenses, so I don't like it for all purposes. I tried out the Axoon A1 gimbal recently, which is a nice generation one gimbal that handles a pretty heavy payload, I think around five pounds. And it doesn't have any drift when it's in lock mode, but it's also kind of buggy. The body of the gimbal was kind of coming loose as I was shooting a little bit. I felt it sort of rocking a bit. So I'm not using the Axoon all the time either. There's no one gimbal that I use all the time right now. I just kind of switch back and forth between a few, depending on what I need. Hoppa asks, will Ya ever do a US meetup? Sure, I'd love to do a meetup in the US. Most of my gigs lately have been in Asia, so I haven't had an opportunity to go back to the US for an extended period of time. Christopher asks, hey man, hope all's well. Been having a great time following your shoots. Did you switch to anamorphic lenses? Uh, no, I've actually never used an anamorphic lens before. If you see some shots in my videos that look anamorphic, it might be because I've used sort of a, a fake anamorphic adapter called the anamorpho adapter. It's just a piece of plastic with an oval cut in it basically. And all it does is it changes the shape of the bokeh in the shot to oval instead of round, which is one of the major characteristics of anamorphic. So it gives your image sort of that stretched out look without you having to go to the expense and the inconvenience of using real anamorphic lenses. Jen Jen asks, do you have a favorite photographer? Uh, yeah, I have a bunch of photographers. I'm a big fan of National Geographic photographers, David Allen Harvey, Steve McCurry, Jimmy Chin, Amy Vital. I sort of enjoy the perverse portraits by Bruce Gilden. Von Wong is awesome. You should check him out if you haven't seen his work. So yeah, quite a few photographers. I can't say I have one favorite because I like different things about each of them. Gavin says, hi Brandon, I am a great admirer of your videos from India. I'm confused whether to buy the Jayun Smooth 3 or 4 for mobile gimbal. 
I don't really know. I assume just get the newest one. The last one I used was the Smooth 2 and it's a pretty good gimbal. I don't think any of these little gimbals for smartphones work perfectly. So it's best if your smartphone has pretty good stabilization built in like the iPhones or some of the new Samsungs, I think. Rainy says, I'm doubting between the Sony 1635 F4 or the Laowa 50 millimeter F2. The Laowa has good aperture, the Sony has autofocus, but which is the most important feature to have? I would say you still need autofocus on a Sony full frame lens if your subject is going to be within about three meters of the camera because the full frame sensor has very shallow depth of field that you notice especially when you're shooting 4k you may think your shots in focus because you're looking at it on a small screen while you're shooting but when you blow it up on a bigger tv you might notice that some shots are just a little bit out of focus the sony 1635 f4 is still more useful in general to me than the lawa 15 millimeter f2 art now says what pp do you recommend and what exact parameters i have to use i mean black levels colos space w etc thank allo your time and keep creating dude you're amazing check out autocorrect it's really useful as far as picture profile goes i use a profile right now called totolo vision quite a bit you can Google it. In the past, I've used a whole bunch of picture profiles for my Sony cameras. I would recommend looking up the EOS HD picture profiles. They're really good. You do have to pay a little bit of money to get the information, but I would say it's worth the 30 bucks or so because he gives you a lot of good information on how to set your white balance and other settings on the camera in addition to the profile in the downloadable PDF that you get when you buy the profile. Xavier asks, which lenses would you recommend I start with? I recently purchased the Sony a6000, considering getting the a6300, thanks in advance for suggestions. You're just gonna wanna look at mainly the Sony APS-C lenses, which are the ones that are marked E, not FE. And I would say start off with the 10 to 18 millimeter wide and the 50 millimeter f1.8 for your shallow depth of field, longer lens stuff. You get autofocus, you get image stabilization in both of those lenses, and they'll cover the majority of focal lengths that you might need. If you wanna add another lens to that mix, you could get the 18 to 105 f4 lens, which covers the effective focal length of 24 to 105 on a full frame camera. But keep in mind, this is not a really pretty lens. If you're really a stickler for the kind of the bokeh and just the character of the lens, this lens is very generic looking. I would say it even looks a little bit video-ish. I've used it quite a bit on a number of shoots, but when I compare it to something similar for full frame, like the Sony 24 to 105 that was recently released, the 24 to 105 just has a much smoother character to me. Filippo asks, rec format question mark, which camera question mark? Thanks brand exclamation point. Okay, decoding this message, I assume he's asking which resolution I'm shooting at and frame rate. Usually I shoot 25p 4K these days because most of my clients that I'm shooting for are in the PAL region, the PAL region, which is 25p. Camera, mainly I use the Sony a7R 3 Occasionally I use the Sony a6500 still, sometimes if I just want the absolute smallest camera possible. But yeah, mostly a7R 3 Erica asks, hey Brandon, I was wondering why don't you use your Sony 35mm lens in manual mode rather than a Nikon or the Helios? I know the Helios is for the swirls, is that the only reason? Uh, yeah, basically. I mean, it's just a matter of getting a slightly different look, a slightly more analog look to the image. The Sony lenses have a little more contrast and they don't have some of the sort of charming flaws of the older lenses. A little bit of chromatic aberration, a little bit of softer highlights, things like that. So it's just more of a subtle feeling that I get from the old manual lenses that's really hard to replicate with a new lens. John says, for some reason the plugin TKY Shadows Highlights is not working with the latest FCPX on my Mac. Do you have the same issue? Is there any update? to the plugin. I actually have not used this plugin in quite a while on Final Cut because the new version of Final Cut has a curves tool built in, which is pretty much the same thing as shadows and highlights if you know how to use it. So if you adjust just the toe or the shoulder of the curves, you're getting basically the same effect as shadow and highlights with a lot more granular control over it. So I would recommend using that built-in tool instead of using the plugin. Okay, so thanks very much. If you have more questions, bear in mind that sending me a private message is probably the least efficient way to get them answered. A much more efficient way is to comment on one of my YouTube videos because either I'll answer it or somebody else who's knowledgeable about the question will be able to answer it for you. So please try that first. 
Thank you so much. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.